Four chases in three days, two of them ending in violent crashes. The video you see right there on the left is from an early morning chase that ended with a crash into a utility pole. This happened on Pool Road. The suspect, a man in his 30s, was taken into custody. The video on the right is from a chase that ended in a crash Sunday night on US 401. The 18-year-old driver died in that crash after police say he crashed into yet another driver. And the number of police chases more than doubled in our state over just the past five years. Thanks for being with us. I'm Russ Bowen. And I'm Liz Ortiz. So what do the policies for police chases look like? CBS 17's Haley Fixler live tonight digging deeper into the stats and why law enforcement officers say these chases are sometimes necessary. Haley, what can you tell us? Well, there are policies in each department to guide officers in how and when they should pursue a suspect at a high rate of speed. And we learned those decisions are not easy and they have to be made quickly. Speeds are still at 140. High speeds and high stakes. Since Sunday, CBS 17 has covered four law enforcement chases across our area. The first involving the Wake County Sheriff's Office. The 18-year-old suspect was going 115 miles an hour before crashing. An innocent driver was injured. On Monday, a chase with state troopers in Johnston County and one in Person County reaching 145 miles an hour. On Tuesday, a driver crashed into this utility pole in Nightdale after leading troopers on a 100-mile-an-hour chase. He refused to stop when troopers tried to pull him over for suspected impaired driving. Hundreds of people without power for hours. The number of chases in the area and across the state are skyrocketing. According to State Highway Patrol, in 2019, there were 454 pursuits. In 2022, 1,053. The Wake County Sheriff's Office says in 2019, they had 33 pursuits, resulting in three deaths. In 2023, 74. And so far this year, 35, including one death. What is the policy in place at that agency for allowing the officer, you know, to justify doing that dangerous maneuver? Hunt Willis and Forrest Horn are partners at Martin and Jones Law Firm. They've represented innocent bystanders who've been impacted or injured by these chases. The attorneys point to these policies as the guidelines officers should follow when deciding if they should pursue a suspect. It might have been a good idea to start the pursuit, but two minutes 30 seconds into the pursuit, now you're in a high trafficked area. Now you're in places where crosswalks exist and pedestrians and people are walking their dogs. We took a look at policies from the Wake County Sheriff's Office and State Highway Patrol. Both emphasize the need for an officer or trooper to weigh factors before proceeding with the pursuit. Former Wake County Sheriff Donnie Harrison tells us within a matter of seconds, law enforcement officers have to figure out why someone might be driving recklessly and if they're putting people in danger if they let them off the hook. The first thing pops in your mind, is it worth chasing this person? But in our mind, has he just robbed a bank? Has he just killed somebody? Why is he doing this? And Harrison says he's not exactly sure why the number of chases have gone up, but he says if law enforcement is trying to pull you over, pull over. Live in Raleigh, Haley Fixler, CBS 17 News.